This podcast is produced by Passion Nerdly in association with the Nerds Domain and our parent network, the Southgate Media Group. This podcast could not exist without their support or from support by Patreons like you. For more information on how you can get involved, visit passionnerdly.com. How's it going? And welcome to Pattern Recognition, our new fringe podcast. Uh, we're about, I don't know, six mm-hmm. six years too late for this. It's never too late. It's the never wonderful too late world for good of internet and Netflix binging on TV shows. There is no too late because for some people, this might be new. It is a new show for me. Yeah, somehow, in all of his uh, supernatural sci fi. Uh, horror pop background, culture. pop culture, it just general knowledge and and exposure. John has never seen Fringe. Yes, this he, this is a new experience yeah. for me, a new TV show. I, I'm actually a little excited because this is we, the this is the opposite of Tome Travelers. Yeah, where you had all this experience with all these games and I knew nothing. This is the show that I watched quite fondly. I loved mm-hmm. Fringe when it was on. I shook my fist when it did things that I thought were unnecessary, but and I cried when it ended. So yeah, no, this this is I, I'm I'm surprised I didn't watch it when it came I, out. I now really now that I've seen that first episode, I mean, we made it well into our well into our relationship. I think mm-hmm. we'd been married for over a year before I discovered that he'd never seen it, and it became I was like, oh, we're doing this and. Mm. We had already started talking podcasts by then, so I said, we're doing a podcast. I mean, is it possible that there were so many new shows? Because, I mean, I, don't know. I remember there was a time when sci-fi shows weren't as big as they've gotten to be now. Like, sci-fi channel shows were the odd thing out. We've well, got and, all and these this shows that have this popped Well, this up. wasn't on sci- sci-fi. This was on, unless that's not what you're saying. Are you saying just well, no, sci-fi just saying- genre? Those kind of shows used to be stuck on the sci-fi channel, and nobody delved into that realm too much. And now we've got sci-fi, we've got superheroes, well, with the exception we've got, of like X Files, we've got fantasy on TV. And for a while there, I remember how big a drought it was for you know until Lord of the Rings and all these other shows started show, you know all these movies started popping up that people were willing to do tales like Game of Thrones. Yeah, well. All I know is, well, 2008 was a pretty rough year for me personally, but uh, I mean, it was great. It started out awesome. Mm-hmm. Bought my first house. I was a uh, mature 23 and uh, was doing quite well in my career. I was making good money and bought a home. Mm-hmm. Ended up trading in my car for a better car, what I thought was a better car. And by September of that year, I lost my job. Oh, okay. So that, it was a pretty memorable year. In fact, this episode, the first episode, because we're going to be talking about the pilot tonight, and it's simply called the pilot. They didn't have a funny, uh, you know, or a fancy, quirky know, that, name for it. It was that just fits pilot. well with the it, origin it, of the story. It, it did kind of fit. Well, there is a plane <laughs> in it. But, um, but yeah, it came out September 9th, 2008. Uh, this was roughly two weeks before I ended up finding out I lost my job. But anyhow, anyhow, we're not going to dwell on that because things, it all worked out in the end. Mm-hmm. But yes, we're going to be talking about Pilot. I, I love the way that this series started because it kind of just throws you in right from the gate. Perhaps, um, absolutely. It, good story. Yeah, Excellent story. I knew, I knew that John was, was into it when the opener ended and he let out a string of expletives. Because he's not he's not a he's not a big cusser, John. No, and huh. and the, that that jaw dropping opener was enough to get him. Uh, yeah, I uh, I did not see this going where it went so quickly. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, so uh, we'll do a brief synopsis of the episode. 
Uh, don't want to. We are going to discuss some spoilery stuff, but we're not going to go minute by minute, so you can still watch it. Please, if you do listen to this and you are so inclined, rewatch the show with us. Oh, yeah. We would love it. Considering I'm considering, I almost did this the other night, but I'm considering maybe live tweeting some episodes um, as we watch them. And if people are interested in that, I will definitely schedule that, and uh, you know we can do a little a little Twitter storm. Oh yeah, that'd fringe, be cool. Because it's such a good show. I loved it so much, and when I that was these were the years I was living with Amanda and uh, my cousin and best friend, and we had such good. And we used to throw Walter quotes around, and love that show. Love it, love it, love it. So <laughs> I'm so glad that we got to watch it the other night and John really enjoyed it. Now the first episode is a little unique because it is almost an hour and a half long. So yeah. it had an, um, it had an 82 minute runtime. Whereas all the rest of them are more normal, like in the 40, 43, 45 minute range. But, um, so this episode started with the flight from Hamburg yeah. to Hamburg, uh, Boston Germany. guy there. They've hit an electrical storm. There's turbulence. Guy is, seems to be responding very poorly to this. Uh, lots of sweating, um, lots of anxiety. Uh, the guy next to him is like, man, it's just an electrical storm. But he ends up, it looks like he gives himself a dia- uh, insulin yeah. injection. It, uh, it looks like, it, what it looked like to me was, you know, when he did it was an EpiPen. Yeah. You know, it's one of those uh, self-contained injections that, you know, uses Compressed air. But it was a, it was a yeah it was a refillable yeah um thing but yeah they they call it later an insulin pen mm-hmm. um but yeah so he takes that and then he t- runs goes to run to the bathroom well of course he's supposed to be strapped in the steward just tries to stop him well he turns around and he's just disintegrating you know and he's just his skin is falling apart and suddenly everybody else on the plane their skin is falling apart she buzzes the the cabin and of course the co-pilot opens the door and i'm like bro don't open the door no <laughs> leave the door shut you have a chemical <laughs> terrorism thing. but thankfully the pilot put it on yeah. autopilot and so um it it ends up landing quote unquote safely the plane lands safely um but when we meet we meet our protagonist in a in a post-coital love scene yeah um with oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Olivia Dunham. Yes, Agent Olivia Dunham. And her and Agent John Scott have been having a little, uh, they've been fraternizing, if you will, outside of uh, the workplace. And they are uh, then called to, they have a little tender scene. I'm not going to get into that because the <laughs> it's not what makes that show great. But uh, it does start the, the emotional under undercurrent of the program. Yeah. But they get called to this, um, they get called to this incident at Logan airport in Boston. Yep. The planes landed. It's on mm-hmm. the tarmac. Uh, you know, they, the, the, the people had announced that there was an, a squadron of planes had shown up and escorted it and had seen the blood smears on the window. That was the first clue anyone yeah. had that the, there was something bad that's happening inch, on that that's, plane. That's kind of... I mean, that's a... I don't ever want that to happen, but that was kind of a cool thing. They saw the stains on the windows. Oh. Yeah. And, then you, that's, and that's all you see, and they're not answering. But the plane, you know, coasts itself in because it has an autopilot program. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so they go... They investigate that. Clearly, they come in. They see the bodies. They see that it's bad news. They... It, fa- flash forward... Or fast yeah. forwards to them at the office at the FBI there in Boston... They get a lead. I don't even remember what the lead was now. Did I write it down? Oh, well, somebody had seen some suspicious men talking to a white guy at a, what are those things called? Like a storage facility. A storage facility. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was essentially uh, Islamophobia because it was two Arab looking men, I think is what it said, yeah. uh, talking to a white man. And, and he was like, oh, go send him. And, you know. Uh, Agent Broyles is kind of a, he's a super jerk in, in this episode. Um, yes. Which I had forgotten about. I had forgotten that he started out this show as kind of a, and he, he actually makes some statements as the show goes on oh, that yeah. really frustrate me. I st- actually started a, a uh, misogynistic. Yeah, uh, full blown misogyny. I, I, yeah, I, I started a misogyny count and because um, he calls, he calls Olivia honey. Um, yeah. and we'll get, we'll get into all the rest of them as they come up. But anyhow, so she goes and checks that out with, with agent Scott. They have a little, uh, you know, you said you love me conversation and you know, whatever. 
but they yeah the the moment they said that I was just like oh he's gonna die yeah he's gonna <laughs> die um I did not let on at that point in in live watching I did not uh explain <laughs> anything I didn't give anything away I just kind of said oh yeah you know it does seem like that but uh so they go to a storage unit mm-hmm. they're searching the storage units as they're investigating the storage unit Olivia's off doing something else trying to make a call. And a storage unit across the way opens up. John Scott makes eye contact with this guy. Um, oh, that was another thing that we didn't mention was that while the plane is being investigated, a van pulls up and the guy behind the wheel looks exactly like the guy that on the was plane. on the plane. And so you're like, oh, man, how did he get off? Is that him or is that somebody else? Is and, it a clone thing? Is it yeah. a time dimension thing? Yeah. And so especially with a show like Fringe, it's like, oh, what is... Where yeah. is this going? But so anyway, that guy makes eye contact with our agent. There kicks off a chase. There's an explosion. And now Agent John Scott is um, infected by, or he's not infected, but he's affected by the chemicals that were in the storage units. And so he is showing symptoms of the disease kind of, or the whatever it was that afflicted the, the passengers on the flight. And so, yeah. So we get the whole, imperatives for Olivia to be doing the job she's doing. She's trying to track down the cure right. for what's happening to Agent John Scott. Right. Because, you know, at the end, and Broyles kind of susses that out as the show goes on. He's like, you're either, you know, an extremely proficient agent or... You had something going on. Or there's something else going on here between you and Agent Scott. And so, you know, which to me is also a misogynistic thing. It's like... Oh, yeah. You know, the the woman's doing something for the man. There must be a relationship. Yeah, yeah there's something else here. You're just and, not, you, you know, it can't just be that you're a good agent. And at the same time, there's the human part of me that's like, does it matter? If it is the right thing to do, does it matter why she's doing it? Yeah, well, in some cases, because you do find out in the storage unit scene, you do find out that she says Broyles is, you know, jealous because his best friend assaulted three Marine Corps privates and I put him away Mm -hmm. and he's just angry and he's jealous or he's angry. She says he's angry. John Scott says, no, he's jealous because you're prettier than him and you do better work than he does. Something like that. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we do, we do get a little bit of that backstory, which is frustrating because later when Broyles addresses it, he's like one bad, you know, one drunken decision or one bad night. And it's like, I socially, I'm tired of that. (laughs) that excuse, he served his country for 20 years and he had one bad night. No, you know what? That, that does ruin you tough. (laughs) Yes. You're going to go to jail. You don't get a free pass because no, you don't. I'm sorry. One bad decision is what sends people to jail. That's just how it is. So that's, that's what he got to do. So, uh, anyway, is what she ended up finding out was that everything that she investigated and trying to find out her research for, the tissue damage and the skin, um, the way that, cause this, his skin, uh, John Scott's, his skin starts to become translucent and you, and as it goes on, it keeps going to the, every time they see him, you know, it's a little bit farther progressed, but, uh, so she keeps, she keeps doing this research and every name keeps coming up. It's always Dr. Walter Bishop, Dr. Walter Bishop, Dr. Mm-hmm. Walter Bishop. So she pulls up a lead and, um, Broyles is, as unhelpful as he has been thus far, but he can essentially Walter Bishop can only be contacted, uh, can only be visited uh, by immediate family. Yeah. So of course we have to go find his son who is in, you know, is this genius. We get it. We get a quick snapshot of Peter Bishop's background. He's a 190 IQ. He's done all this stuff to, um, you know, get by, but he's kind of a nomad. He doesn't do, doesn't stay in one place very long and for some reason he's in Baghdad so that's where we find him and you're like is he a criminal is he a con man is he a secret agent yeah you 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 were left with a lot of questions as to what he is yeah and we find him talking to a couple of business developers it looks like in in Iraq and he's sussing out some deal for like 600 600 grand or something like that um I couldn't even tell you what they were talking about. It was, you know, it was all, it was a con job anyway. Yeah. But she essentially blackmails him 
into yeah. coming back with her. Oh yeah. In fact, I think uh, a large portion of the plot, you know, de- development for this episode is the blackmail. I mean, she mentions it at least three or four times when he wants to do something else. Yeah, she's like, I could just make a phone call. My phone's in my pocket. My phone's out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, and and then it comes out eventually that you know, it, it, she reveals that I I don't have a file on you. I was she. I mean, she was just reading them. And yeah. he's kind of stunned because he reads people, which that to me is kind of one of the things I'm yeah. like, oh, that's frustrating. The pretty girl reads you and you can't figure it out because she's the pretty girl. That's that's how I saw it as as a viewer. But. And it, it, for me, it was kind of a twist because I would have expected the blackmail issue to be a major character development thing throughout the series. But they pretty much uh, you they know, nipped it right there. Yeah, they, they wrapped that up in less than the entire episode. Being someone who watched the show, now it's been a while since I've watched it, um, and some of the listeners may be able to point this out, and then we'll find out, but I don't feel like Big Eddie Mm -hmm. ever comes up again, which Big Eddie is the uh, bookie that, or the casino owner, whoever, that that he supposedly owes owes money to, so, and his name is not, you know, he does, he's not called Big Eddie, he changed his name to Big Eddie, but whatever. It that's kind of some of the yeah. it's a it's a it's cutesy little side talk that goes around this whole this whole thing. So anyway, Peter goes back with her. Um, they go into St. Clair's, which is where Walter Bishop has been for the last seventeen years. After a lab incident, put one of his assistants um, either I think they died. I think it was yeah because he got it was yes. manslaughter is what he was convicted of, mm-hmm. but he was deemed um, mentally unfit for trial and so he's been in this mental institution and you find him and uh Olivia does talk to him Peter does not want to go in and see him but she he at least gets her inside but after a few moments of talking with her Walter's like you had to come here with my son yeah I want to see my son yeah he had figured that I mean it, for he him figured he had that figured out. that much out yeah and you could still tell I mean there was lots of brilliance in there but you could tell that it had been rattled by 17 years in an in an institution yeah. Um, brilliant acting on the part. Oh, John of, Noble is so good for, you know, I've, I've seen him. He's been in many things over the years. This is by far the best I've ever seen from him. I was blown away. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, Walter Bishop is easily one of my favorite characters, um, probably of all time, mm-hmm. but, uh, and John Noble does it so well. Uh, but yeah, so they end up Peter, with some with some more blackmail is kind of uh coerced into signing Walter out. Walter wants to do some tests on on the agent uh, on John Scott. Mm-hmm. Wants his lab, kind of has a violent outburst when he finds out his lab has been gone. I mean, 17 years of course the lab isn't there anymore. Yeah. But Olivia gets broils, you know, with some intimidation, you know, she stands up for herself. Uh and she gets she gets his lab. He gets an assistant and agent Astrid Farnsworth, which is another one of one of the great characters of this show. And uh, I keep saying and, uh, but I'm trying to remember the point. But it, he ends up, he's like, there's nothing I can do for John Scott. Unless I know exactly what's in that lab, well, what he chemicals was he was exposed to. to, I can't do anything for him. There's no way to find out because she didn't see what was in the lab and the lab was completely destroyed. Except As, for... Ex- well, he said, yeah. well, we can use the, this is the first time this comes up and it becomes kind of a staple in the show. And I believe even the image of Olivia in the tank is kind of the, I think it's the cover of the first season DVD box, oh. <clears throat> but yeah, synaptic transfer system. And in the synaptic transfer system is where she essentially, <laughs> she essentially takes LSD and some other, uh, some other chemicals. Yeah. She's put in essentially a, a sensory deprivation tank with a, um, apparatus, a whole lot of EKG <laughs> pickups all over her. Yeah, but she's got something at the base of her neck yeah, that goes into the spine, spine yeah. or into the the brainstem that supposedly she can have a converse, a shared dream state with uh, someone who's in a coma, and possibly a corpse that's been dead for less than six yeah. hours. So they do this; it works uh, when they're. What he says when their patterns are in sync, you know that they're there. And yeah. so there's a waiting period. It takes some time. 
But she talks to John Scott in this shared dream state, which they go through some interesting places. Um, one yeah, of the things a, there was a, a she saw her kayak, her uncle's kayak. She saw like a play a playground or like a playroom. Then she was in a graveyard for a lot of it. And I don't know if you noticed, but one of the tombstones behind her said he's not dead. Yes. Um. So not sure that's pointing to anything, but it was kind of interesting. And then, uh, or except for the fact that he's not, John Scott's not dead. He's is just in a coma. But, um, but yeah, then they're like in a desert and it's just, it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's meant to look dreamy, but yeah. she, he is essentially... expecting there to be something more to that eventually. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. And I, I, there's so much that I have for, I have forgotten more about the show than I remember. I'm sure. But, and watching it again will give me the opportunity to see some of those little things that I might've missed. Mm-hmm. Um, but he shows her, he kind of recounts his memory. You know, she gets to see his memory. She sees the face of the guy when she comes out of the tank, she's able to get a, uh, <clears throat> a, uh, what do they call that? A suspect sketch. Yes. She makes one of those up and they discover that it's identical to one of the passengers that was on the plane. And you find out that Morgan Stieg was the, was the passenger yes. and he has a twin brother named Richard Stieg. So, dun to dun not clones or anything, just twin brothers. And they go and find, they search his place to talk to him to find out what chemicals are in there. I won't go into all the all the details of the yeah, you, chase. Yeah, y'all know. I mean, it's a chase. If and there's a chase, and then, you Peter, know, he doesn't want to talk, so yeah. Peter goes in, and Peter essentially breaks his hands or something. But, uh, and they get it, and they're able to fix John Scott. Yeah. John Scott goes to the hospital. Everything is looking good. They're just going to wrap up some stuff. And there's a tape playing, though. They, the they, guy said, yeah. They, the guy said, I have proof that it was, it was an agent. From with, your office. Who was who asked blackmailing me, to, me yeah, or told forcing me, to do, me this. to do this. Yeah. And he says, you want the proof? I have the tape. I buried it. So while he's in the hospital, mm-hmm. Olivia goes, I don't think Charlie went with her. I think she went by herself. Uh, to the hospital... Um, no, yeah, she didn't, he was not there because she had to call him and he was calling yeah. the office to say, Sh- close this place down. I want all the exits sealed. Well, yeah. Cause he was in the hospital and he went in and found, so, so before we get there, yeah, she goes and she listens to the tape, but while she's gone, John Scott gets out of his room and goes and, and kills the guy, yeah. kills Richard Stieg. He, you know, suffocates him. Yep. But, uh. And so Olivia listens to the tape and you find out that earlier in the show, John Scott had been seen getting out of his car on his phone and he said, we'll treat you like, you know, we'll treat you like family. And, uh, he says he's talking to like the, uh, is it the, well, yeah, the conversation the NTSB? between Scott and, uh, it's the national you know, transportation, yeah. whatever bureau Stieg, but it's all, Yeah. It, it basically the conversation she overheard at is the car the, is, is the, the phone tape. call on the tape. Yeah, yeah. so she so, re, she recognizes the voice, recognizes the moment that it was said. The man she loves <clears throat> and the man she just saved is the man that was betraying everyone. Yeah, so it then that ensues into this huge chase. He steals a car. She chases him. There's a car accident. He of course dies. Mm-hmm. And, She's struggling uh, with all of this stuff. Um, and I do definitely want to say that Mark Valley, that was a pretty impressive death scene. I mean, that, it, it's a, you know, I, I'm sorry, putting, putting on a whole bunch of makeup and laying there and pretending to die. I was actually impressed. You yeah. know, the, I thought he did a good job. It might sound really silly, but that's just me. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so, uh, he dies. They kind of go on through all of this. Walter has been, um, quietly petitioning, uh, I almost called him Joshua because that's the actor Josh Jackson, but has been petitioning Peter to not make him go back to St. Clair's. He is doing well on the outside. He's the research and the experiments and having his lab back are helping him um, acclimate. And by the end of it, you know, he's going to take him back. But Olivia says, you know, you guys are doing, essentially you're doing good work. Can you guys stay And And that's, kind of where the show wraps up but we get a little tag at the very end Mm -hmm. to show to bring it all back to this is not just going to be some 
uh, weird thing of the week that makes no difference. Well, that's another thing. Ma- I didn't even mention that yeah, we went massive to Massive Di- Dynamics. Dynamics. We went that's to Massive the... Dynamics. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I completely forgot. No, I haven't been looking at my synopsis notes. So. But it's a, it's a clencher point that that at the end and uh, building well, yeah. up. Er, yeah, I mean, earlier we go, we go to Massive Dynamic because she wants to talk to William Bell because Walter Bishop says, I used to work with yeah. William Bell. He was my partner. And William Bell, you find out, is this 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 yeah. science innovative no. innovative guru that has started this company massive yeah. dynamic which is a multi-billion dollar and coming into that scene as someone who had never seen the series i expected the guy in the van to be him i expected it to all tie in that oh, just way. in that way yeah i was i was thinking oh i bet the massive dynamic guy was the guy in the van and this that's how this ties in and then it's like, oh, no, that's not him. It was this other guy that worked for Massive Dynamic. Right. And so it's kind of like a curveball. That Massive Dynamic might not be as involved as you think. And then that big scene at the end. Well, you have – and the, the thing that I have not talked about, which is what our name is 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 came, totally came out of, is when Olivia goes and talks to Nina Sharp, who is, for all intents and purposes um, – the head of Massive Dynamic in William yeah. Bell's absence. She says, do you think he's part of the pattern? And Olivia does not know what in the, the world pattern. she's talking about. Oh, we thought you had higher clearance. Yeah, we... Th- oh, I thought... Yeah, exactly. I thought you had higher clearance. So she ends up going to the office and ends up talking to Broyles. Mm-hmm. And Broyles says, essentially, after a conversation, after a nicer conversation than anything that they'd had, I mean, it's a complete different uh, person. He says, come work for me. And she pretty much tells Mm -hmm. him to, you know, you know, go away because there's this guy. Well, that and she's like, no, I like what I do. I don't want to go work for somebody else because he's not enough. Broyles is not. It's a it's a joint task force between the the NSA, Homeland Security, the CIA and FBI. And so he's just somebody who's leading this joint task force. Yeah. And but he starts he's like there have been several cases um that fit, you know, that we are calling as part of this pattern and I didn't take a whole lot of notes down about those. All I remember is that the first one was a kid who'd went missing named John Thompson and cuz John was like, "Oh, <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm missing." And uh showed up like 17 years later somewhere and uh I can't remember all the things, but and we can go into those deeper um considering maybe doing some little blog recaps or just little things here and there about it but all of this stuff has probably been researched and and talked uh talked about quite thoroughly in the last because i mean the show came out 10 years ago oh yeah um and most of the podcasts were done 10 years ago but uh so anyway but yes at the end of the show we get another glimpse of john scott's corpse being wheeled through this through this building by what looks like to be what looks to be an orderly and here comes, he goes into this, or Nina Sharp meets him, mm-hmm. says, how long has he been dead? And he says, five hours. And she says, uh, okay, get him in for questioning. Yeah. So you immediately, it takes us back to the synaptic transfer system. We know yeah. that they're going to use essentially Walter's system, probably a little bit more refined since his was quite, quite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Or archaic. Archaic, yeah. yeah. And and he, this place is like top oh, yeah. level un, unrealistic technology that you could only dream existing. Yeah. And so, which you know gives you this idea that you know massive dynamics something something big is going on there. Yeah. And is Walter the you know was his experiments the you know the thing that set all this up? Right. You know, I mean, there, there's all these questions that I have. Uh, you know, obviously as a new viewer. Yeah, so as a new viewer, let's hear your thoughts about. I mean, I know we've gotten a little bit through the synopsis, but what are your what are your um, you know, thoughts on the show? So i I love sci fi fantasy, and I, you know, I love when we can take these things and try and mix it in with the modern day because mm-hmm. it makes it much more relatable. And this show, I'm just watching. I'm, but there are things in today. That, uh, you know, the, the misogyny uh, that are, you know, issues, people misjudging these things about people, uh, especially like Olivia Dunham. I'm wondering if is that going to carry over? Is this going to be part of the things that makes her drive to be a better 
agent is overcoming this ridiculous bias. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, are, are we going to see that coming up? I was like, yeah. You know, on top of that, I looked at the what they were doing, and I was like, okay, is any you know is it any of this a fringe thing that people currently believe is possible? Or I mean, is this going to be a theme where every week we're going to see a new technology that's something that people think about uh, as the fringe science or the pseudoscience thing? Is it? Are we going to see Mothman appear or something else or all these other things that yeah, are these no. pseudo weird things that people talk about? Uh, like, you know, the, the whole – you and I had talked about recently uh, in, you know, many Asian countries, they the, the belief that your blood type can determine your personality. Oh, you know, okay, we, yeah. That, you know, are we going to see pseudoscience stuff like that or the idea of memories passed down through genetics? I mean, these are all things that we cannot prove, but these are things that some people have believed is right. possible. And – I don't remember everything that is touched on, but I I feel from what I remember about the show is it doesn't... I mean, I'm sure there are some things that Walter does that yeah. are known pseudoscience methods or, or practices or ideas, but the show really takes on, as far as the things that they're dealing with, their, mm -hmm. their, um, the conflicts... And the the experiments that they are essentially trying to suss out and figure out where mm -hmm. they fit are very unique in, um, I mean, just like the disease that, or the affliction of the people on the plane is not yeah. something well, that... Well, it sounds like there's going to be an earthquake machine discussion at some point, because they talk about, like, uh, a, you know, an area of the country, like somebody... Oh, that was one the of the pattern yeah. things, yeah. Part, you know, the, these things that are part of the patterns... These are all things people, some people do believe are out there, and these are fringe uh, conspiracy theory, pseudoscience beliefs. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I, so I, I'm wondering, is that going to be part of the theme of the show? Is every show is going to be a new fringe thing? You know, so I, and and, and, you and will I don't have to see. I will have to see. You'll have to see because I don't want to say yes or no, no and then be wrong. But at the same time, I, you know, I definitely really want to say I am so excited about this show because two people are involved in it that I really am loving so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there is the actress for Astrid Farnsworth. Yeah. John didn't know this. And I, I actually didn't know this until recently. My dad actually told me this, but being podcasters, mm -hmm. uh, one of our favorite, one of our favorite podcasts that we listen to together. And it, John is actually, my stated, absolute favorite. Yeah, he says it's his favorite bar none yeah. is, uh, Alice isn't dead yes. by, um, Joseph Fink who did Welcome to Night Vale and so many others now. But Jessica Nicole is... Astrid Farnsworth, is but she Astrid plays Farnsworth, Keisha, but she's Keisha on, on Alice Isn't Dead. Yeah. And I, it just, that makes me so happy. I was just like, oh my goodness, I have a face. You, you look, have a face now to I go with I have a face the, to the go to the voice. And you look nothing like I expected because, you know, you've this character in the story has this huge backstory of love and loss and everything over, you know, what it feels like. De you know, a decade or two. So I had expected her to be like in her forties, and she definitely does not look like she's in her forties. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. You know, but um, that's that's just me. Yeah. So notable characters that we meet in this cl clearly yeah. are Agent Olivia Dunham, who's played by Anna Torv, who mm -hmm. I'm sure has done more things. What I know her from recently is Mindhunter. Yeah. Um, Joshua uh, Jackson, who has been a mainstay in most of the my movie viewing since I was a little kid because of Mighty Ducks. So Charlie Conway is uh -huh. the original Josh Jackson role that I remember. Yeah. But, of course, he was Pacey in Dawson's Creek. He was in a lot of those teen horror movies and teen flicks, teen dramas from the late 90s. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark Valley, another name that I'm excited about because he plays John Scott, who dies in this episode. I, I don't know if we're going to do some flashbacks or other things with him in the future. I couldn't. I really don't, uh, I really don't remember. I can't tell you. But the thing that excites me about him is that he was in a series I absolutely loved, which was a DC comic series called The Human Target. Mm -hmm. uh, but on top, and that, he actually did Human Target after Fringe. Uh, yeah. which I, I did not know that, you know, he did French first, but he was also better known for being on Boston legal for like four years. He was See, on Boston was, legal. Wasn't he also on a soap opera? Yeah, he was. See, I in, had a friend uh, who liked him from a soap opera. Yeah. He was in days of our lives for 37 episodes from 1994 to 97. Oh, okay. And so, no, he, he's been around for a while as an actor 
And I'm a fan of his because he played Chance in uh, Human Target. Okay. So. And see, uh, Lance Reddick was Philip Broyles, mm-hmm. and I know I've seen him in other things. Philip, and I couldn't... okay. Yeah, Philip Broyles. I have, so they had said I don't his think name. They ever, I don't ever think they say his first name. They uh, When they were first getting to the location, he gave his name as Agent Yeti. Uh, I thought he said Charles Broyles, and then I was like, is that the Charlie? And then they introduced no, Charlie, Charlie is Francis. Charlie Francis by Kirk Acevedo. Or yeah. however, I, my apologies if I completely butchered that last name. Well, it looks like Lance Reddick was in John Wick. Oh yes, yes, actually, and John he was. Wick chapter two. Uh, I believe he plays the uh, like the the curator at the hotel, like the main uh, Jonah Hex, White yeah. House Down. I saw him in something recently, and I could not tell you what it was. Yeah. Oh no, he did a voice in, uh, and the character looks like him. Silence in Horizon Zero Dawn. That's Lance Reddick. Oh yeah, awesome. Uh, but I remember because <laughs> John played that game. And I would be reading while he'd be playing, and I was like, "Man, that voice is familiar." And then when I saw his face, I was like, "I know this face." And I, I looked a lot. Him. So, um, and uh, Blair Brown was Nina Sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, we will see her more, and then of course we we already mentioned John Noble uh, as the wonderful Doctor Walter Bishop. Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, as far as guest stars go, um. Really, the one that struck me the most was Peter Outerbridge, which he was the doctor in the hospital, Mm -hmm. because he always looks like a very young Peter O'Toole to me, (laughs) and so that's what I usually call him, is Peter O'Toole, but he's actually Peter Outerbridge. He was in, really, the only thing that, he's been in a lot of stuff here and there, but the only thing that I watched that he was on, like, a series that he was on, and he was a series regular or a cast member, was uh, Bomb Girls. Oh. About the... uh, when in Canada, you know, down here in the United States during World War II, when all the men were at war, the women went and made built planes and munitions. And up in Canada, they did as well. And there was the girls who worked in the bomb factories. Okay. And nice. he played one of them's, uh, I believe, husband. But and then uh, Jason Butler Harner was uh, the Stieg brothers, and he's been in stuff, but like he's in Rain, uh, Ray Donovan, or he has been. He was in Changeling with. Angelina Jolie. Oh, he's in Ozark, which is a show that I've heard is really good that we may, we need to probably check out. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. And it's, you know, and he's, looks like he's done a lot in the, uh, modern sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, he was on, he was on Blacklist. Yeah. Oh, we probably saw that because we, we watched those episodes. So, because we like, we like Blacklist. We we love Blacklist. But no, I'm, I've been really impressed with this series and uh, yeah i i think well, did helix come around around the time as this no. one as well or no this no? is much older this is 2008 wow. this is 10 years ago helix came out i feel like in like 2014 the one that's the one that only had like two seasons right yeah but it's one of those things where i just feel like this is a helix series was 2014 why did i not see this i don't know and i, I mean of course you you are getting my raw thoughts after only seeing one episode right. this time. Yeah, and, and just in case in case you're listening and you don't know what Fringe is, Fringe was a sci-fi. It was kind of a crossover. What I felt could be summed up as X-Files meets Lost without the aliens. Mm-hmm. I don't remember any aliens. Not like, not like the aliens you're thinking of. No, no grays with big eyes. But um, it is J.J. Abrams, so you have that weird... Mm-hmm. As the show goes on, John will learn, and and for those of you that have already seen the show, and I can say this without many spoilers, there's just a huge interconnectedness. You start to see yeah. things. This, the pattern kind of gives you an idea of where it's going to, you know, of the kind of things that we're going to see coming up. Yeah, everything is going to be kind of a part of a bigger thing, and we just have to figure out why. What what is this bigger yeah. thing? And I'm I'm enjoying it. I I, I feel like this is a very different. Uh, did, how how involved was he in the writing of this? Because um, I feel like this is a very different storytelling style from any of his movies recently. I mean, Star Wars, Star Trek. Oh yeah. Uh, well, this is this is well, this was more in his Alias years. Yeah. Um. Oh okay. Yeah, because okay. he did Alias as well. Yeah. But on this episode, he is listed as actually the three. Writers and creators for this pilot are J.J. Abrams, Alex Kurtzman, and Roberto Orsi. Or Orki. I think it's Orsi. Okay. Which I think are kind of his... I feel like they do a lot of stuff together. Um, 
and you know a better a more prepared podcast host would have would have brought this up but um yeah he did star trek with jj abrams roberto orsi oh um there we go well these are just questions that pop into my mind because you have more knowledge of actors and things of that nature uh seriously i mean when it comes to movie movie trivia my my wife Roxy just blows people out of the water. Definitely blows me out of the water because I can never remember anyone's name. Well, I remember stuff that's really that never um, almost never comes up. Some, <laughs> but, but I can remember faces. But I a lot of know, times. But I you know I've taken some I, I I've taken a few classes on film, and uh, well, that sounds fancy. Yeah, that sounds fancy. I took a film appreciation class in high school. But the thing but... is that so I I look a lot at you know lighting and directing and re- recurring themes and. My film appreciation yeah. teacher would probably be very disappointed to know that I don't spend every show dissecting scene setups and stuff like that because yeah. that was all about symbolism and foreshadowing and and uh, I don't I know I, I couldn't I couldn't enjoy anything if I, I just know. sat and stared at that all the time. I, th- I think it gives for me it gives me a deeper you know a deeper appreciation. But there are times you know I have trouble with faces because like I mean to me John you know. The gentleman playing uh, Agent John Scott looks Mark a lot Fowler. like uh, – he looks a lot like Ben Browder occasionally to me. They have a very similar facial and body structure to me, so it's hard for me to – I'll be like, is that him? Oh, no, that's not him. Because it, it's a, we were watching it. It's like, you know, oh, he was on uh, – I, I said, he's on Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And no, that was Ben Browder. Oh, okay. So <laughs> – but uh, – But, yeah, so that's 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 the first episode – of this show and we i'm not sure what the release schedule will be probably weekly i think we could probably do this one weekly um as as soon as we get it set up with um our our pod our executive producer and our uh network uh uh head but i hope you guys kind of enjoy this this is it's kind of going to be kind of low oh we didn't talk walterisms that's oh we're gonna we're gonna hammer out this we're gonna hammer out this format as things go on but we do want to um discuss walterisms there weren't very many and this one does have i'm gonna go ahead and censor the word just because feel free yeah because we are going to keep the show pg-13 but it's uh it it was uh they were in the car it was walter and olivia and peter and Walter's in the back seat and suddenly goes, oh, and Peter says, Peter's like, what? And he goes, oh, essentially, I just peed myself. <laughs> They're like, oh, great. But yeah, Walter has some great one liners. It was just through, a squirt. It was just a squirt. But uh, the yeah. other one that I liked um, that yeah, he said, what was it? It was talking about doing experiments. It's, yeah, he said, he said, there's nothing better uh, or the, the, the next best thing. To a human is a cow. Well, or it was, no. uh, cows are the, the only thing, are the, the best only, subjects for experiments. The only thing better unless than... Unless you... you know, humans are better. Unless you need a cow. Unless you need yeah, milk. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Unless you need milk yeah, and then we, a cow. We, butcher, we yeah. butchered it horribly, but it's essentially <laughs> uh, the next best thing to a human, or the only thing better than a cow is a human. Unless you need milk, then you really need a cow. But um, yeah, but yeah uh, we'll, we'll, have our, we'll have our Walterisms... A little bit cleaner cut next time, but oh, no anyhow, that's it's, our it's... that's our first show for uh, pattern recognition, and we hope you will join us here on out from week to week as we uh, as we look at these episodes. We're hoping to have some guests, some fringe friends, pop on now and again to join us in the discussion. And if you have any suggestions or want to air any grievances with how we discuss <laughs> the show and how we don't speak the English well. Please uh, go ahead and send those to passionnerdly at gmail.com. You can also find us on all the social medias, uh, facebook.com slash passionnerdly. Twitter and Instagram is at passionnerdly for John, at Rewerks, R-O-O-W-E-R-K-S for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are on Patreon. If you would like to show some support that way, we would love it. It would uh, every Every penny that comes out of our Patreon account goes straight into new equipment or upgrading mm-hmm. our equipment and hopefully yeah. we got some stuff on the rise that we want to do um and then what else we're oh we just we got shirts so tpublic.com slash passion early will also if you're interested in picking up one of our logo shirts 
that's the place to do it. So uh, we had a good time talking about this, and we're going to go watch another episode here in just a little bit and come back and talk to you all next time. So all right. have a good night, folks. Thanks. This has been a production of the Southgate Media Group. For more podcasts like this one, head over to southgatemediagroup.com.